just received a brand new ChargePoint HomeFlex EVSE to install. Welcome to Hacker Week. So my Nissan Leaf came with its own EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment. But I decided to go with an aftermarket one, partly because I wanted to mount it outdoors. That was with the Grizzle E that I bought. But I then found that the ChargePoint EVSE, I can monitor on my phone and keep track of how much I spend with my power company, actually, uh, on charging the car. So I can actually track uh, what it's costing me to charge the car. This one can be installed outside also. But I'm going to do an indoor installation on it anyway. But um, today I thought I would just walk you through along with me the installation and the setup for the app on the phone. Let's get started. Okay, let's get on with the unboxing. I usually don't like to spend a ton of time on unboxing because I find it to be ridiculous. How people go through describing all the packaging and everything else. So here it is. It's a box. It's made of cardboard. It has things in it. <laughs> so this is the main unit that's going to mount on the wall. And this is where the charge cable will connect up to while it's mounted on the wall. The charge cable goes in here and connects really easy. We'll get to that in a bit. We've got some instructions here which I am going to pay attention to. Um, this is uh, a little pamphlet that comes with it explaining more, more cardboard, some screws, hardware, more cardboard, even more cardboard, and there's the cable. And um, well, let's uh, follow the instructions and get going. Let's take a look at what we've got. We have the main unit, the power cable, the hardware, quick start guide and instructions. This is a template for mounting it, where the screw holes go, the installation guide. Got everything in here. It even tells you just what size circuit breaker to put in. I'm going to be charging at 32 amps and I need a 40 amp breaker for that. I actually have a 50 in there so I'm good to go. Oh, it even comes with labels for the uh, circuit breaker for the box. That's nice. Um, with all the different uh, 20, 30, 40, etc. all the way up to 80 amp. Wow. Um, so that's the instructions and the hardware which is just a few screws. It's even got, it's even got the nut driver that you can put in your drill. That's nice. And a drill bit. Very convenient. I get bonus points for that in my book. All right, let's take a look at the main unit here. Got some plastic to cut off. So this is where it's going to mount on the back here. It's just a couple of screws, it looks like, that hold it in. I'm going to read the instructions further, but it looks like it just basically sets on two screws. You put the two screws in the wall, clamp it down on there like that. And then this section lifts up. This comes out. This new piece comes out of there. This is where the power cable goes in. Connects right here on these three leads. And you basically just flip that lever down and it pinches it in place. No tools required. And it looks like the pigtail here already has the ends prepped for that. Yes indeed. They've just got terminals um, soldered on there. It looks like it's just soldered and crimped flat. And then there's a smaller control circuit that plugs in there so that your car can communicate with the control unit to let it know when things have charged. So um, let's get over to the location where I'm going to mount this. We'll use the template to get a couple of screws in place and get this thing mounted up. Typical three-prong welder outlet. And I needed a place to mount the uh, main unit for the EVSE, so I put this stud here just now. This is where I'm gonna put the two screws 
gonna mount it right there. So let's see. I'm just gonna eyeball the center here. I'm gonna get a plumb line on this with my level. And that looks pretty good right about there. Let's put the template up here. Get it lined up on my line. I've got three holes to mark. Now let's drill those out. Supply drill bit. Got the supplied net driver and a screw. We're gonna put in the top one. And I'm gonna leave it out about three millimeters away from being fully seated. And we're gonna hang it on the top hook. And now the next two go in right here on the bottom inside the unit. Okay, now we are ready to put the charge cable on. This does have a way that it goes in there. There's a little locator pin right here. There's also a hole in the bottom over here that assures that you get it in the proper way. Not that way, but this way. So we're just gonna feed all the wires through that hole, pull them up. There is a little clip that's supplied that comes on the end of the cable I've taken that off of course to put it through you just push it in all the way just like that now we can take this part and plug it in and then these three go in just like it looks right there green red black Push them in to where they're seated up against that little rubber piece. Push the clips down all the way till they snap in place. And that is it. Now the cover goes on. Like so. You can use a coin, a screwdriver, a washer. Turn this clockwise to lock it in place. And it is not plugged in yet. As mentioned, this is a NEMA 650 outlet. One leg of 110 here, a leg of 110 here, and a ground. This EVSE is also available with a different plug than this. It's available with a NEMA 1450, which has four terminals. It's 110, 110, a common, and a ground. So this one here, I have connected in my box, breaker box, to a 50 amp breaker. Um, I labeled it 50 amp welder and EV charge because it can also be used for a welder. And it's unplugged right now, but we've got this all installed. So we're ready to plug it in. If you're doing any of this work yourself, you can probably find um, instructions online of how to connect a NEMA 650 or a NEMA 1450. If you follow those instructions and you're careful, I suppose you can do it yourself. You need to be very, very, very careful and make sure you've turned off the main power and all that. Um, if you do all that, it's at your own risk, but uh, it is possible and you can look up instructions how to on other videos. I'm not going to cover that here. So um, we're ready to plug this thing in. Let's um, do just that and see what we get here. Ugh. That is a heavy duty cable and it is in and it lights up green. So we can get the other cover back on here now. Let's plug it in the car and go over the charge app on the phone. Okay, let's open up the charge point app on my phone. This is a uh, 
Moto G Android. There it is. I'm going to go up here to the little three bar menu. We're going to tap home charger, setup, plug in hardwired. It is a plug in amperage. Let's go 40 because um, any higher than that and my Nissan Leaf doesn't do anything with it. It can only charge I think at 32 amps something like that 6.2 kilowatts anyway let's move on we're gonna leave that at 40 next and it is connecting to the charger configuring the power source joining the Wi-Fi network and there we go join the Wi-Fi network adding to charge point account so it's doing just that it's letting my charge point account that I set up know that I have a home charger now and somewhere I should be able to put in my utility company and they will then have access to the kilowatt hour rate that I pay and then I should be able to track how much I am actually spending charging my car okay let's click next the color just turned green meaning we're good to go and let's see schedule charging we can set reminders to plug in track all of your charging in one place great how do we do that let's go to settings got my address and what's the utility plan Duke Energy and uh, let's see got to figure out which one I actually have RTOE 28 residential all energy time of use okay I think that's the right one I might check later to see if I've got that accurate but anyway for now we're set up so now I can actually track what I am spending with my utility company to charge my car let's plug it in And it's lit up blue, pulsating to let me know that it is indeed charging. So it's all lit up blue now. And it's all blue and pulsing, let me know that it is plugged in and charging. So back in the app, let's go to home charger. And it says, that I am indeed charging. I can't track anything other than that, how much it has charged, etc. I can check that in the car though, but I can schedule charging. So if I want to, on uh, weekdays, I can do a start and end time, um, weekend start and end time. So I can take advantage of charging it later at night when the rates go down because the demand is less. So I'll work that out later and find out just when those rates kick in and I can set this up so that it automatically starts and stops during those times. So here we are in the car. Let's go to the charge menu. And we're charging at 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Estimated time to 100% is seven hours. So after having the car on the charger for a few, let's take a look at charging activity. And it's going to show, there we go. This was um, the home charger in Pinehurst right there. It shows five miles were added in 12 minutes at a cost of seven cents. And then this was the fast charger I went to in the other video, 8.95 for that. And then you can look at energy 36 kilowatts distance 126 miles that's what's left on the car to drive so it gives you a little bit of information of what has happened on the charge well that wraps it up the charge point home flex install was pretty easy really straightforward um, very easy to connect everything up like I said, you can get an electrician to install the plug for you or you can probably do it yourself if you're resourceful and careful 
and find uh, some videos on YouTube how to do so. I'm looking forward to the tracking of my cost so I can see just what the savings is on an EV. I'm sure it's going to be much better than gasoline and I gotta say I do not miss making stops for gas. Uh, so far I've been using this mostly for commuting in the last few weeks and I really enjoy the car a lot. I can't say how much I love being in an EV, which is kind of funny being that I own an auto repair facility and I look at all the problems happening with those internal combustion engines that I get to repair and make money on and I think to myself, I don't have any of that anymore, at least not on this car because I do have a 2002 Eurovan that I have to replace the transmission in. So there you go. Anyway, this is a wrap on this video. Look for more on the Nissan LEAF in the coming weeks get into more of its features and menus, explanations of how things work in it, and generally what I think of the car as time goes by. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I figured, you know, electricity goes zap, so I'd wear the Zappa shirt. Thanks, Frank.